So I'm here with JR. Uh, today's Veterans Day and we're glad to have him here. Uh, JR, could you please tell me uh, when you got into the military and what branch? Yeah. I joined the Air Force in November of 1964. And I went to boot camp in Lackland Air Force Base, did my tech training in Biloxi, Mississippi in early 1965. Two year assignment in Southern Japan, which was marvelous. I enjoyed the heck out of it. And uh, pretty much the day I went up to the first sergeant and said, you know, I'd like to finish my four year enlistment right here in Japan. And he went, hey, well, you know, we're going to keep you in the Far East, son. But uh, <laughs> I said, really? Okinawa? No, but you're getting closer. Taiwan? Ooh, you're really getting close now. <laughs> Philippines? No, but you're really... So, uh, yeah, I did a year at Da Nang Air Base, oh, no. 67, 68, with the, the Tet Offensive and, and so on. And uh, came home, and, and I got out. I said, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm happy, but I didn't care for my, uh, my Air Force specialty, which was copying Morse code. And I, you know, uh, during uh, certain aspects, or dur during parts of my tour, we didn't do just... Um, eight hours a day, sometimes it was as long as 12 or so on, during Tet, and uh, and uh, I just said, I never want to chase another dip as long as I live. A little bit on the tedious side, right? Oh, God. <laughs> so uh, I got out, and then uh, in uh, 1974, the Coast Guard started looking for structural firefighters, at which point I picked up a degree in fire science, and was riding in the seat, and, and I said, well, what are you gonna do for me? Because I'd, re I'd uh, gotten out as an E-5 staff sergeant at the time. And they said, we're gonna make you an E-6. We're gonna just give you a first class petty officer. And all you have to do is sign up for two years. And since you've already done your, your uh, service, if you don't like it, you can go home. And the only reason that we would call you back would be all out war. And we assumed that you would want to come back anyway. So I said, that's fine. Let's do that. So 32 years later. <laughs> well, they got you. <laughs> <laughs> they, pretty well. They, they set the hook. And uh, no, I, I extended for another two years. And then I extended for another two years. <laughs> and they said, Chief, you're going to have to re-enlist. All right, what's the, what's the shortest re-enlistment I can do? Three years. Okay, I'll take that. Well, once I got over, once I got over twenty, and had locked in my retirement and so on, I, uh, you know, they threw me out at sixty. <laughs> they said, Master Chief, your fund meter has been pegged for so long. You know, on your sixtieth birthday, bye bye. Oh man. But uh, yeah. well, with all that years' experience, is there anything you would like to tell uh, these younger vets who are in serving now and look up to you? Oh, I don't know that they look up to me, but <laughs> no, I, uh, I would say, gosh, stick it out. It's well worth it. It's one of those where uh, I had a marvelous career um, and I was uh, uh, very, very privileged to do some of the things I did for the United States Coast Guard and actually the Air Force <laughs> long ago. But um, I would say one of the one of the talks I always had with my junior enlisted was stay around, it's worth it. And there's a lot of times, yeah, okay, I don't get to, don't get to be home or I, I can't be home for a birthday or a wedding or something of that nature. But that kind of fades into the wake when you realize I have my retirement uh, pretty well locked in and uh, I've done my time and I can I can walk away when I need to do it. And as such, um, if I, and I, one of the things I told them, if I asked you to, uh, if I asked you to put away a certain amount of your paycheck right now for your retirement or for your medical expenses, uh, and you did that out of your paycheck, how much money do you think that would be when you get to a point when you really need the medical. And they'll sometimes give me a number. I say, yeah, but you know, that, that might go towards a car fund, might go towards a down payment on a house. It might go towards something else 
and you don't have it. When you lock in your 20 years with the military, you have your medical. Yeah. You have it for life. And I have TRICARE for life. And that's worth it in and of itself. Absolutely. You know, and, and so, you know, and just the very fact that there's a camaraderie that goes, as you know, <laughs> with having worn the uniform. And uh, like I said, I, I um, when the time comes and they're saying, you know, JR's, uh, he's laying here in front of me, here's the ashes and so on. What would JR want us to know about him? Right? And I'd want people to know that I tried to be the best I could be. And I was very privileged to be able to help with some of the history of the United States. Um, you know, I, I worked the Hurricane Katrina with the Coast Guard, you know, in 2005. I, uh, I worked the LA earthquake in 1994 with my fire department. I worked the Valdez oil spill in 1989. And this is ancient history to most people, you know. You stand up in front of a bunch of kids of the Coast Guard, oh yeah, I was there with a <clears throat> Valdez oil spill, and they're going, what's that, what's that, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, yeah. at the time, it was the biggest, biggest thing going, you know. And uh, at 58, I was riding gunboats in Guantanamo Bay with the uh, Joint Task Force Gitmo. And, uh, you know, as the, the kids, again, far younger than I, you know. <laughs> Master Chief, are you all right up there? <laughs> Hell yes, I'm fine. They didn't get to see me go to bed with Mr. Ben Gay and Mr. Tylenol <laughs> and, and so on, bouncing around. But, yeah. you know, so that, those are some really cool things that I'm very happy to, to have in my in my portfolio when I... <laughs> yeah. Uh, with that being said, and all the things you've gone through, uh, when it comes to knowing what a veteran or a patriot is, what does that mean to you? It means that uh, it's somebody that wore the uniform and for a period of his time, his life or her life, put the country ahead of themselves. And, you know, as, as they say, you know, you write a blank check and the needs of the Air Force or the needs of the Coast Guard or Marine Corps or any of the services they come first and you put yourself second. And you do that to allow some of the idiots that are in our country right now, their free speech and their, you know, it's their right to say what they want to say or do what they want to do. And I mean, it certainly may not agree with many of their points of view or their political um, aspirations and or um, the results of what they do, but I put myself in a position to defend that right. And uh, I salute everybody else that's done the same thing. It's right, done yeah. the same thing. So good. Um, well, before we scamper out of here, uh, what was your first car? Uh, do you happen to remember? Oh, yeah, it's been a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, I mean, 1932. Ford Model B swing window coupe. <laughs> and uh, it was powered by a 1948 Mercury flathead. <laughs> and uh, it was the fastest car in town off the line. But I had the, the Model B rear end and would top out <laughs> at about 55 miles an hour and blow up the engine. You know? oh, no. I got, I actually got lost in a, in a funeral procession <laughs> because I couldn't keep up with a fruit funeral procession or procession. <laughs> yeah, but that was, yeah, that was, I, and I traded that in to, to a guy for a 1951 Oldsmobile. And then I stepped up to a 53 Oldsmobile and then I was overseas and so on. And the first car I got back, when I got back in 1968, I had a 66 GTO. And I traded that in for a 67, 427, 400 horse Corvette convertible. That's a speed boost. <laughs> yeah. 
six miles to the gallon. I said, you know, I'm gonna, gonna improve this. I'm gonna get, uh, take away the three deuces. I'm gonna put a, a Weber four barrel on this thing. <laughs> it went from six to eight, eight miles to the gallon. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, anyways. So well, yeah, first car and then the progression. Right on. <laughs> Hey, JR, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> oh, thanks. This has been fun. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope I haven't bored the audience too terribly much. And to all the veterans out there, thank you all for your service. I think it was worth it, and I hope you do too. <laughs>